Some of you are wondering how to get the tanks to avoid the obstacles. I will explain the math behind both how to calculate the route and how to avoid obstacles. As you can see in this video, the tanks are navigating around the obstacles to reach their goal. This behavior is what I will show you. This PDF file is included in JSFlags-AI. It explains the math behind how to control the tanks using an AI principle called potential fields. The basic idea is that the tanks are pulled in certain directions based on which field is the strongest. After you add up all the potential fields, the strongest field is the direction the tank ends up going. I recommend reading through this PDF even if you don't understand much of it. Figure 2 shows the attractive potential field. The blue circle is the goal. The angle of each arrow represents the angle the tank needs to move to get to its target. The length of the arrow represents the recommended velocity needed to reach the target. In case you're wondering the reason why the arrows towards the center are shorter because when applying the attraction field, generally you don't want to overshoot your target, you will slow down toward the goal. In JS Flags, you don't need to worry about slowing down before stopping. You can go from max speed to sudden halt no problem. When calculating which way a tank should move, first calculate the distance to the goal. X, G, and Y, G represent the coordinates of the goal. X and Y represent the coordinates of the tank. First find the difference between the X coordinates, then find the difference between the Y coordinates. Square each of them, add them together, then take the square root. D represents the straight line distance from your tank to the goal. To find the angle the tank needs to get to the goal, we need to use arctangent, specifically arctan2. Arctangent gives the angle between two points. In this picture in Wikipedia, arctangent gives us the angle between two points. In this picture, if your tank is positioned in the middle of the circle at 0, 0, and your goal is 1, square root of 3, square root of 3 is about 1.73, and if east is 0 degrees, then your angle, the angle your, the tank needs to turn, is 60 degrees, in the, and if you're going in the counterclockwise direction. The function we use in jsflags-ai is math.arctan2. Keep in mind that the y variable is the first argument. Now let's look at the angle formulas. The first formula basically says if the distance from the tank to the goal is less than the goal radius, stop moving, meaning you are inside of the goal. So delta is used because the Greek letter d which is convention in math meaning difference. You read delta by saying change in. So if the change in x, meaning the left and right direction, is zero, and the change in y, the up and down direction, is zero, you've made it to the goal. We'll skip the second row for now. Third equation says if the distance is greater than the radius plus the spread, so just imagine a uh, circle around this goal, that's the area where your tank interacts with the goal. The cosine is the x distance needed to get to the goal, and sine is the y distance needed to get to the goal. So in this third one here. I'm not sure what s is, just ignore it. The alpha represents the strength of the traction field. Alpha is multiplied by cosine. The higher the alpha, the higher the change in x will be. Same with y, the higher the alpha, the higher the change in y will be. Let's take a look at the code. In jsflags-ai, we have this calculate goal function. And the first thing that we do is we go through each of the tanks. And if the tank has a target, we get that target. Otherwise, we generate a target. And we use that as our goal. So we find the distance between the goal and the tank using the distance formula here. So we subtract goal dot x from or with 
my tanks position dot x and the same with the y gold dot y minus tanks position dot y and each of those we we raised the power of two raise this one to the power of two and we add them together and then we square root the whole thing because sometimes doing decimal math in JavaScript can be a little finicky. I created this round function, which rounds it to four decimal places. You can see that uh, later on in the code. So now we need to calculate the angle. So we use our arctangent2 function. So we have our x, the same the distance between the x coordinates and the distance in the y coordinates and we pass these in and we have this negative sign in there be something to do with the quadrants um, you'll have to play with that to uh, understand that more and then we find so we get the angle from the arctangent and then we convert the angle from radians to degrees because arctangent outputs in radians and then we need to um, change the degrees. Um, we need to negate it because the tank degrees ascends clockwise and arctangent descends counterclockwise. Then we need to convert the degrees. So arctangent outputs a range between negative 180 and positive 180. And this converts it to 0 to 360 degrees. There's two reasons we do this. One, it's easier to use it's just the positive numbers. And two, that's, that's how the tanks are represented on the server end from 0 to 360. So we uh, finally now have the degrees um, in a similar fashion that the tanks are represented with degrees. At this point, I break away from what the, uh, the PDF recommends, and I don't do this cosine and sine difference and multiply it by the alpha. I do something a little simpler. I find the, the tank, I get the tank angle and I subtract it from the degrees that it should be going, and I find that difference. And if that difference is positive, and it's less than 180 degrees, meaning it's not behind it, then I change the angle velocity to negative one. Um, if the degrees is less than zero, the difference is less than zero, then I add it, I add one to the angle velocity. I set the angle velocity to be one. And if we're, and you, you can kind of see how this works. And if the distance is greater than 10, meaning we're not quite there yet, then we'll set the speed to one. Okay, so that was the calculate route, the calculate the goal potential field. Now we're gonna talk about the avoid obstacle potential field. So as you can see in this picture, uh, the arrows, when they are closer to the edge of the obstacle, which is this pink thing, uh, the arrows are a lot longer than they are toward the edge. So this represents the closer we are to the obstacle, the more we want to get away from it. If we're on the edge, we only want to get away from it just a little bit. So we use a similar function to find the angle, the arctangent, again, I'm using the arctangent too, and in this situation, if the distance is less than the radius, meaning somehow we are inside this obstacle, then the cosine is multiplied by infinity, meaning we really desperately want to get out of that thing. If we are within the spread, if we're outside, 
distance is greater than the radius, meaning we're outside of the obstacle, but we are within the spread, then this equation um, creates these, these big arrows. They're not infinity arrows, but they're larger arrows to get away from the obstacle. If distance is outside the obstacle and outside the spread, meaning we're dwelling out here, then the, the change in x and change in y of the avoid obstacle potential field is zero, meaning it has no effect. And uh, the way that potential fields work is that we add them together, and as I said earlier, the one that's strongest is the one that wins, and that's the way the tank ends up going. Okay, so now over here, let's take a look at uh, how I've implemented the avoid obstacle potential field and the uh, calculate route potential field. So first, let's go down to calculate route. And so this code here is very similar to uh, the calculate goal field or function here in the JS flags AI. But the, the big difference is that instead of going through every tank, it's only going through the um, it's only affecting the current tank. This is a, a function on the prototype. This is a prototype function on the tank object. So we uh, similarly we, we find the relative x and the relative y and we calculate the distance, same as uh, as I already went through. And then we find the angle, and then we convert the radians to degrees, and then we negate the degrees, and then we change it uh, to be from 0 to 360, and then we find the difference, and again, we, we change if the difference is greater than 0, but less than 180, we, uh, we change the angle velocity to be whatever this constant value is, if, uh, and so on and so forth. You can see the logic here pretty simply. And if we are greater than 10, then we keep going full speed. And if we scroll up to the properties of the tank objects, you will see there's three objects here. There's the avoid obstacle object, there's the avoid tank object, and there's the goal object. And each of these objects have, have two primitives inside them. There's the speed, and there's the angle velocity. And these three objects, when uh, it's time to tell the server how fast we want the tanks to go and what angle velocity we want them to go, in these functions, we, we add up these three values. So the goal speed, the avoid obstacle speed, and the avoid tank speed. And we add up the goal angle velocity, the avoid obstacle angle velocity, and the avoid tank angle velocity. And I'll show you how we calculate uh, these values here. Oh, you, you saw, so as you see in the calculate route function that we just showed you, we set the value to the goal speed and the goal angle velocity. I'll now show you how to get the avoid obstacle speed and the avoid obstacle angle velocity. You scroll down here to calculate obstacle. So the code here is, is pretty similar to the get path function. So we uh, loop through all the obstacles and we get the distance of each one between the obstacle and the tank. And we get the obstacle radius. And if the distance is less than the obstacle radius plus the buffer zone, that's your spread over here, I call it the buffer zone, we get, so if we're within that area, we get the angle to the obstacle 
and with these negatives here it makes it so that it's in the right quadrant and also so that the angle that we're calculating is going away from the obstacle not toward it like in figure two so we find the angle that we need to get away from that obstacle and we just do the same thing as I've showed you uh, two times before we convert it to degrees from radians we convert it to be between 0 and 360 degrees and instead of doing the cosine and sine which you are welcome to do I, I do a little more simpler approach and I find the angle difference between the current tank angle and the angle I need to get away and I and basically this code here is the same as I showed you before a little difference I'll talk about in a second and basically the goal of this highlighted code here is to try to make the angle difference as small as possible so um, as you can see there's a little extra in uh, this time around so what I do here is that I have this constant avoid angle strength so that's a constant that's set up here and it is set to 1.15 right there and that constant is multiplied by the obstacle radius plus buffer zone divided by distance so what this does is that this as the tank gets closer to the radius of the obstacle this number increases why because as this distance becomes smaller and smaller this fraction here becomes larger and larger and uh, that's the angle velocity there on the avoid obstacle object and the goal I just set that to be zero oops that should actually be avoid obstacle dot speed but that doesn't matter as much because I don't change the speed much I'm usually just going as fast as I can so again let me show you the uh, the get speed and get angle velocity functions up here. So we add up the speed of the goal, the avoid obstacle, and the avoid tank. Like I said, it's usually just each one is usually one, it's a total of three. But the server ignores anything higher than one, so it usually it just ends up being one. This one's a little more important. So add up the angle velocity of the goal add up the angle the avoid obstacle angle velocity and there's a third one here avoid tank angle velocity and that pretty much works the same way as avoid obstacle you're just dealing with tanks instead of obstacles so let's run through an example so let's say that the angle velocity of the goal required the tank to turn at plus one as a plus one angle velocity but to the right of the tank, while it's trying to turn, we have an obstacle in the way. And after the, that equation is run, this returns a negative 2. So when we add these two together, they end up being negative 1, causing the tank to turn the other direction, because this potential field is stronger. Oh, I forgot to add that at the beginning of the calculate obstacle function, each time we run it, we set it to zero because we don't want it to be set left over from last time we ran this. If, if we actually are away from the obstacle far enough, we don't want that uh, messing with it. So each time that's run, if we're not even close to the obstacle, then, then that is zero, allowing the goal speed and goal angle velocity to shine through and to allow the tank to continue going towards the goal. And, and that's how the tanks avoid each other and avoid the obstacles.